Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is our last Therapy Tip Tuesday with me for the month of April. I hope you guys enjoyed the last three videos that I posted, and I hope that you enjoyed this last video and that you found them helpful and you were able to use some of the information for your child or they helped you to find a diagnosis for your child or anything. As long as it helped, I consider those videos a success. Our last video is going to be about therapy exercises and activities that you can do on the go. As we know, it is hard to get everything done. As I've said in my previous video, there's a million things to do throughout the day. You have to think about sports, you have to think about their schoolwork, and then you have to think about getting the speech and language homework done. There are a million ways to be doing those speech and language goals while you're on the go. One of the activities that you can do is sequencing. You can be in the car, you could be in the park while you're doing this, you could even just be getting ready for the morning while you're doing these sequencing activities. And then you prompt your child to give you the sequence of events for the day by transitioning, by giving transition words. For, for example, first we're going to go to the store, then we will go to the park. You can even sequence the events before pulling out of your driveway. First we're going to this place, then we're going here. While you're driving, you can ask them the sequence of events for brushing your teeth. How do we brush our teeth? First we do this, then we do this, next we do this. How do we brush our hair or how do we make a bowl of cereal? Ask them those steps and make sure they're saying first we do this, then this happens, then that happens. Make sure they're giving you the sequence of events in the correct order. If they don't give it to you in the correct order, come back to them and say, hey, here's how we would do it. This goes first, then this goes first. Make sure you're providing them with examples, not just having them say it and not correcting if they are slightly wrong. Even if you think it's a small little difference, it's still worth it to just give that one more clarification for them. Another thing you can do is compare and contrast. This also can be done whether you're at home, you're going for a walk, you're going for a drive. You can identify similarities and differences between two different houses that you pass by. This house has a red door, but this one has a black door. This one has a lot of windows in the front, and this one also has a lot of windows in the front. Here are the similarities, here are the differences. While you're driving, you can be at a red light and say, how is this car similar to this car? Or how is it different? This car is red, this car is blue, but they're both small cars. Or this one has two doors and this one has four doors. You're comparing and contrasting those two different cars or the two different houses. Um, you can do following directions. Like when you get to a red light, give your child a two-step direction. Like clap your hands, then touch your head. Or clap your hands, then touch your nose, or say hooray, then touch your ears. It can be any sort of two-step direction. That's easy to do. You look in your rearview mirror and you see what your child's doing. Um, you can also you do things like describing. You can play I spy. I spy something red with black wheels and a blue door. Or you can say I spy something that has an orange sign and the orange sign has a sun on it and wait for your child to look around and find it. You can even ask your child if you want to help them expand their language a little bit. Let's find something. Let's describe it together while we're at the light. You can describe those. You can even do the describing at home also. Um, you can ask your child some a variety of WH questions like who, what, where, when, why and encourage them to ask you questions about your day. For example, like who did you play with at recess? What did you eat for lunch? When is your library book due? There's a variety of WH questions that, be can, that can be asked, and your child can ask you those questions, too. Um, and then you can also just work on articulation on the go. That is, like, one of the easiest things you can do. Let's say your child is working on the L sound, and they're working on L in the initial or beginning of words. So you look around the car. Let's find things that start with L. Um, I see a lock. My car has a lock. Make sure they bring their tongue up to their spot and they don't go lock. It's behind our teeth on our spot. Lock. I see a lock. Explain them the sounds. You can work on identifying a variety of different speech and, and language activities throughout your day. Um, if you go on Teachers Pay Teachers, which is a great resource, there are a million free resources on there of parent handouts and parent activities that you can do with your children. Um, 
I know the task of getting speech and language done can seem daunting, but the more you realize how easily it can be done on the go and how easily these things can be done, the better off your child will be and the better off you will be because you'll realize I don't have to plan a whole other thing into my day. I can just do this while I'm continuing throughout my day or while I'm doing, um, while I'm making breakfast or while I'm driving to soccer practice with my other two children and we're working on this child's speech and language while we're doing that. Um, I hope that these activities helped you guys and I hope that you found them helpful and I hope you guys have a great rest of your Tuesday and enjoy the rest of your April and enjoy the rest of your spring until hopefully summer comes soon and quick. Have a good day.